everybody. My name is Christina McClellan. I am the AVA Education Manager. You may have seen just a second ago, we're joined today. We are here in person at AVA with some UAB students, with our guest artist, Tamika Toll. Um, so a little bit about AVA, if it's your first time joining us, we are a visual arts center located on the campus of the University of Alabama at Birmingham. We do eight to 10 exhibitions a year highlighting a mix of regionally, nationally, and internationally acclaimed artists focused almost exclusively on contemporary art. We serve a diverse audience of university faculty, staff, and students, but also artists, museum patrons, and donors. We help represent the visual arts at UAB to local and regional institutions, but also the national and international art community while simultaneously striving to keep our exhibitions directly relevant and engaging to our surrounding Birmingham communities. Since 2014, when we opened, we've been featured in publications such as the New York Times, the Huffington Post, Nation, Raw Vision Magazine, PBS Canvas, and we're very proud that our exhibitions and related educational programming are free and open to the public. Um, so this is our Outside the Line series. It's usually just simply kind of a coloring night, um, and it was created actually by UAB students uh, from our Student Arts Council. And uh, we're really excited for everything that they're going to be doing this year. Uh, hint to the students on the call and then also in line. They have a really fun uh, Halloween event coming up um, over at Art Place. So make sure you guys check that out. A uh, quick few housekeeping notes for those online as well as in person. Um, note that discriminatory or hate language of any kind will not be tolerated. The session is being recorded, but the recordings are largely the screen shares. So we want to encourage you, if you feel comfortable, uh, to turn on your screens. This is a night to decompress, color, and uh, create art, participate in a discussion about art as well. Uh, so we really encourage you guys to ask questions. You can do that by dropping your questions at the bottom of the screen uh, to uh, in the chat function. For you guys here in the room, just yell it at me, <laughs> and then I will repeat it so it gets caught, uh, uh, since, so the mic can pick it up as well. So just raise your hand and let me know if you guys have a question. Um, and then um, a couple of announcements. You guys might have seen the, uh, uh, the, uh, all the announcements going across the screen. We've got a lot of great uh, upcoming events. Um, there's a lot of events happening around marking time, the current exhibition that's here on display at AVA. Just know that you can, if you are in the area, book a time to come see the exhibition, marking time, from 12 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday. Um, so you can access that via our website, as well as all of our great and wonderful upcoming events. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our tonight's artist, Tamika Cole. So Tamika uh, began making art while incarcerated at Julia Tutwiler Prison for Women in Art Class through Auburn University's Alabama Prison Arts and Education Project. She began with a creative writing class and continued on to art, reconnecting with her creative side. Her co uh, collages and other works of mixed media link penal time to other forms of racialized subjugation and violence against Black people. Cole's art combined images to examine the criminal system and the nation's long history of anti-Black violence. Tamika Cole is a lifelong uh, resident of Birmingham, Alabama, where she continues to create art. In 2021, she was the recipient of the South Arts Southern Prize and State Fellowship, as well as a 2020 Art Matters Fellowship and has been featured in the 2020 iteration of Marking Time, Art Made of Massive Restoration, which was at MoMA PS1 in New York, and then of course here as well in the iteration at AVA during this year's exhibition. So welcome to Mika. I'm really excited to have you here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, colliding is supposed to be fun. So the main thing I hope is everybody have fun. Um, it is a, a good way to uh, work out things in your head. You know, it's, it's like a thinking board. So um, sometimes the subject matter will be serious. And other times, you know, it'll be more fun, like what we came to do tonight. But you can do it about anything you want to do. Um, it's just um, the best advice I can give is to not be uptight. Know the rules, love the greats, but when you're a working artist, it's it's really all about feeling, being true to your authentic self, even if people doubt you, 
uh, they say they don't like it. If you do that, every time you sit down and do something, you'll enjoy yourself. And you'll, you know, you'll overcome any negatives about it. You know, you'll just learn to enjoy what you do. And it helps. So. Well, how should we get started? For those um, of us in the room as well as at home. You know, you can you can you can collage absolutely anything, really, truly you can. Um there is a selection of cartoon characters, um uh, different type of paper texture and color. Um and there's also crayons and markers. A collage can be built on every single thing you see on this table or the least thing on this table. Uh, if you attach this eye to this paper, it can mean so much. So it's what you see in it. So you, you, you really just take that approach of, as you're going through the process, what does it make you feel? And it don't have to be like serious, like I said, anything. Halloween coming up, make a cartoon character scary. Who you want to be your superhero? Create that person. So it could be a photo of yourself injected into whatever you're doing, but you can make the layers as much as you want to or as light as you want to. So um, what do you think about when you start a collage? Like, do you draw things out? Do you just start cutting? Uh, what kind of goes into your thought process? Uh, probably too many thoughts at one time. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's why I do it. Because uh, I could just have a burst of uh, ideas and I can't keep up with them. And it just, so I guess at random, if something really sticks out to me, the way I know something sticks out to me is um, something I want to pursue if I dream about it. Mm -hmm. And usually, however, I dream about something, you know, I could hold on to that and I could just really, straight out of my mind, put it on paper. Yeah. So why 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 did you decide that we would do cartoon characters today? Um, I have different processes uh, in my life, and like uh, all the success is great, but since I'm kind of int introverted, um, I have moments where I need escapism. Mm -hmm. So I like to laugh. I like cartoons. I like pixel cartoons, especially. Um, I like new, I knew a cartoon or whatever. So I just thought, um, not only that, and just what we have to deal with on a daily basis in society as a whole is stress. You want to do something that could, you know, make you laugh, you know, make you smile, think about it, and you just don't want to think about negative things, things that make you sad, things that make you upset. Uh, well, why don't you uh, talk us through what you've kind of already started on uh, there and where you think you might go next with the collage? Um, even even just playing around with the bugs, bunny, like I did. Um, normally, if I do something like that, it's not actually what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. So it's just really, it just get it just get be charged up, get me flowing. So even though I put the together a different like bugs bunny probably not what I'm gonna end up doing okay it just starts my it just kicks my brain in okay so well um kind of as we start to make here I, I want to ask you some questions about your kind of life and career as an artist um so what really inspires you to continue to make artwork um So it's, it's the way that I connect with just seeing the world around me, people, um, people that's happy, people that's content, people that look like they're pissed off. It's just really absorbing the everyday human condition. And, you know, I, I, I see it and, yeah, you know, I, I look at some of the media, but not a lot of it is good for you. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, it's um, 
be trying to process that myself. Um, I always tell myself, like, you're, you're not perfect. You're not going to be perfect. So uh, I just try to be a decent person and look at other people's circumstances and have a level of understanding mm-hmm. for what the next person is going through. Yeah, so a lot of empathy and um, and trying to kind of process then mm-hmm. what you see around you. Um, so with that, I, I'm going to kind of oscillate between the questions I had and then also this. So where do you think you're going to go? What what step do you, are you going to do next for your collage? <laughs> probably, probably who I wanted to do, uh, Bart Simpson. <laughs> so why is Bart your favorite cartoon character? Uh, I probably shouldn't say this on on. Uh, on TV, but the first time I saw um, Bart Simpson, I wasn't aware that they made adult cartoons. And it, it was Christmas time, and Homer told him he was going to buy him a, a TV, but Homer didn't buy the TV. So he cursed, and I was just really shocked because I didn't know cartoons do that. Yeah. I was impressed. <laughs> I mean, just seeing it, I just, I don't know, it's just something about Bart Simpson. He just, he's hilarious to me. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Okay. So he just, uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so um, I gave everybody in the room uh, white and then also black paper for kind of your bathroom, but everybody also has colorful paper as well. Um, what, why do you decide to move towards the black paper and so the white paper? Is it because it helps color pop or, you know, what, what's your thought process here? Um, color pop, yes. But also, uh, I'm just, my life as a whole, everything I've experienced, um, I think, the reason why I choose darker backgrounds is because normally we do not like to deal with our darker selves. So I always say um, not being ashamed of that, but looking at it in depth and not being afraid to have it on, on display actually helps you to become like as a person. That's, that's pretty um, amazing and, and inspiring, actually. Um, so um, what are you drawn to in creating your art? Um, what role does it really play for you in your life? I know you kind of said a little bit about that, but um, why have you decided to stick with art, visual art instead of, say, writing? Because I know you got into art originally from a writing prompt. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, we have to learn um, seizing the moment. Sometimes the universe has things perfectly aligned for us and um, you have to just be open to receiving it. So I just feel like this is creating a platform um, for me to eventually get back to my writing. And, uh, you know, right now, just uh, going with the flow uh, and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So in that you like uh, writing and then also art, are you uh, are you reading anything these days? Uh, I buy crazy amount of books. Now, have I read them yet? No. <laughs> um, kind of as we all inspire to be or aspire to be, uh, read all the books that we want to and then never do. What I do want to do is uh, start making time to... Uh, you know, if it's just read like one hour a day, that's something that's on my to-do list. Mm-hmm. Reading is very important. Uh, so soothing. Mm-hmm. Does your reading list ever make it into your art? Um, or is it really more inspired by experiences and what's going on in the world? 
Uh, it's more or less experience in, like I said, different things that I choose to absorb what I need to at the same time, um, you know, kind of process the craziness that goes on in the world, but um, writing, writing is something that is, is, is actually more my personality than doing the art, but it's like, um, this is a great opportunity and I do enjoy doing it. So I know I'm doing it for a reason. I mean, I know what the reason is. So I just keep pushing forward with that. So um, with uh, this being in the middle of a pandemic, has the has the pandemic influenced your artwork in a way? Have you been creating anything during the pandemic or that's pandemic related or has it just been on other topics? Uh, it's not like the pandemic's been pretty busy for you with all the exhibitions. Yeah, no, not 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 really about um if I would do something about the pandemic um creatively, it would definitely be seen. Mm -hmm. Or or possibly writing. Because I like I like movies that are Kind of shake people up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know we had talked earlier about you were interested in a um a horror flick. Um, Candyman. Sorry. Candyman. No. I'm going to. Okay. I want to go see it, and I heard it's really. I they say it's not as scary. It's a first one. Man, I don't want to watch the first one. I watched it when I was younger. I was like, oh. So mm -hmm. we, we're over here. We've got a conversation going on now about Candyman, <laughs> which I cannot participate in because I do not like scary movies um, at all. Oh, yeah. I hear those are amazing. Um, I just I can't do the the scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so to begin, all right. So tell us where you're at with your creative process now with um, the collage. Um, let's see if I can make myself laugh. <laughs> Chop up parts and <laughs> right. step one. He'll probably get revenge on me for this. He'll make he'll make me into an episode. That would be fun. That would absolutely be fun. Um, so uh, for your current work that's up in the exhibition, um, I thought we might, while we're in this middle of kind of creating and everybody's cutting and uh, trying to decide what they've got on, um, Tina, would you mind sharing some of the um, uh, some of the pictures uh, from the exhibition? And we can kind of go through those. Um, and again, I just want to say, if you are in the Birmingham area, you're welcome to come and see the exhibition. Same for our students who are here. Uh, 12 to 5, Tuesday through Saturdays. Um, so this is a um, piece called uh, Locked in Palm. And this has been the uh, kind of cover for our exhibition here. Um, and then I think it was also at the iteration at MoMA. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us kind of, A, how you made it, um, and B, what kind of inspired you to make it? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to call it inspiration, but... Uh, um, at the time, I was at the uh, Birmingham Women's Facility um, work release, and I don't know what was going on. Um, uh, with uh, I had a, a confrontation with a correctional officer, and uh, it was not a good one. And 
you know, I really hated the place. It's very stressful being over there. And I was very angry. Um, so, I think later on that day I had class to go to. And, of course, I, I, I hadn't done my homework, as I never do, until the last minute. Um, please do not take after me doing that. It's not, it's not okay. a good habit. <laughs> yeah, I, say, I think everyone in this room has done that. <laughs> yeah. So, I went in to do the collage, and it just seems like, I don't know, whatever I was feeling, it just... It just bled into the collage. It was just, I was so angry that I was kind of like really calm, but it was kind of scary, like, because I, I felt like I was going to uh, really get in some trouble and just go back. So it became kind of a, um, a way for you to process the experience then. Mm-hmm. Was this the one of the first pieces of work that you made? Um, or was it kind of later on? Um, it may have been, may have been maybe like my third, third, fourth piece because uh, I started out doing it uh, for for charity. But at the same time, I was going to this art class, and when I got to class that day with the piece. Uh, had Stevens when she saw it. I mean, she, she was trying to tell me how special she thought it was, but I was so angry, I really couldn't think about what she was saying. <laughs> um, but um, after that, over, over a period of time, it became a way that um, I used to kind of support it, to deal with it because I really, really didn't like being there. And it was really important for me to hold myself together to actually get out of there. And so um, High Seeds is with the uh, Alabama Prison Arts and Education Project. I think I got all the words in the correct order there. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that program and what that meant to you? Oh, ooh. Honestly, I mean, just really looking back, had I not ever signed up for that class, I would not be sitting here right now. Um, that was the moment when I really found myself. But it didn't come easy like that. It took some convincing, but once I bought into it, I was just all into it, you know. Um, just kept signing up for the class over and over and over and over. I wasn't signing up for nothing else. And uh, it, it really kind of changed my whole spirit. Mm-hmm. And so the first class you took with them was a writing class. Was that correct? Mm-hmm. Um, and do you remember the prompt for that one? Oh, no, I've been to so many. No, no, I can't exactly mm-hmm. remember. But I do know Kaz actually taught the first class. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh, before we move on to the next piece, uh, tell us where you're at now with the collage. I'm probably never where it's really a process. I mean, yeah. <laughs> going through and selecting. But once, so when you create this collage, I see the way that it's cut. So, did you cut within a piece and then, because when I do my collages, I cut out the piece and fit it into the, that piece that I cut out because I can take collages too. And so, I'm wondering, like, how is that like acrylic base? Is it a, like your ground? So, the question for the people in the Zoom is what is the base for the collage? Like, do you cut? Not like the ground, but then you cut out to the ground because I, I start with ground first. Oh, okay. So do you start with the grounds first? Um, sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I, once I start, however it kind of guides me along, I just kind of... But with this particular piece, oh, you can. Oh! Oh, yeah, down, okay, okay. down there. Yes. Can you see what I'm... Okay. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, I think um, I was just sitting down. You know how maybe you might pitch a, a two a two year old just angry with the. <laughs> Because there's no messed up start off like that. That's why I'm asking. The child, so I just think it was just really me somewhere in my mind going and doing that. It was no thought process behind it whatsoever. It was just like, I'm angry. I don't want to go to class, but. And it just captured the particular mind at the moment I was in. So what would you advise with that if it's not going the way that you want, Mika? When um, would you just keep going with it, or would you stop and pivot and, and go to something else, or? Oh, the Lord, is, the Lord is a wonderful like that. You can mess up everything, but just the way it is, you can put that out and sit it to the side. I do it all the time. If I put something together and I just really, really don't like it, the part I like, I just cut it out, sit it to the side, keep going. And I may not even use it right then. I may use it for another time. So it could just be... Ooh, like that. Um, so Tina, if you want to go on then to the next piece, I actually cannot see the name of it, Tina. Um, and then I think it was also at the iteration at MoMA, is that correct? Is it up in the no. exhibition. Um, I thought we might follow her in this or Let's see. So when you find your um subjects, are they just random people that you find or do you have like people that you know just like, hey, can I borrow your face? Uh it's def it's definitely random people. Uh especially since uh I don't want to make people feel like I imposed on them. Yeah. In a private type of way. So the, the question to the um, to the Zoom was: uh, Are the subjects of her collages specific people, or are they random? Uh, so, uh, Tamika, can you tell us a little bit more about this particular piece? Um, I think. Uh... My, it's just it may have flashed up on my phone. Um, and one of the things I do is kind of read the comments. Uh, when you read the comments, is where people get to hide. They get to be cruel. They get to say things um, they feel confident in doing. It. And what they fail to realize is that you, if you know how to express yourself in a respectful type manner, these conversations that you want to have, they can be had. But it always gets disrespectful. So what you want people to understand is no matter what the situation is, uh, you have to have in empathy. Uh, even in the worst of situations, you have to see it from different angles, but from in a, in a humane type of way. If this was you, how would you feel? What you know? What what would be going through your mind really if this was you? Mm -hmm. If this is your friend, if this is your brother, so to speak. So when when did you make this one in relation to um, the first one, the locked in the dark hall? Um, that's, that's, that piece is kind of um, recent. 
it's just um I think I was going through one of them phrases like they say where I'm uh dreaming a lot. And whatever I see in my dream, I don't always try to understand it or make sense out of it. I just create. Um so uh at this point, um let's see. I I am do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, where you think you might be going with this clause, or we can pivot to uh, another uh, another question? No. <laughs> so, no, for um, the one that you're working on now, um, how, well, actually, question, how did the warm-up one uh, with Bugs Bunny and the ears and, and everything, is that, I know you said it's just warm-up, but is it... Um, is it still kind of influencing where you're going with this one or are you going in a totally different, uh, does it, is it influencing in any way? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's the one one. Um, okay. So you have uh, kind of really had a, a very busy year over the last, well, I guess two years now. Pandemic feels like uh, not a year. Uh, so um, you've shown in a lot of, exhibitions and uh, have gotten a lot of rewards and fellowships and such. What is that like for you? Um, having all of a sudden just kind of blown up overnight as a, as an artist. Um, I mean, great. Listen, but it, it's kind of overwhelming at times. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, have you, you know, how do you kind of, um, do you, has someone been helping you go into these exhibitions? Have you been seeking out the exhibitions? Um, how are you going to, how do you see yourself going forward in your art career? Um, making more artwork. That's all I like to focus on. Being honest with you, I don't like to focus on who like. Uh, once I just made up in my mind how happy I am doing this um, right now. Oh, I mean, yes, I, I, I suppose I would do things as far as um, seek out fellowships or whatever, but um, it's not really my strong point. Yeah. I just kind of stick to what I do. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of let the universe or people that believe in me kind of, you know, say, well, pay attention to this. It's, you probably need to look into this. I just, I'm trying to pretty much the same person I always was. I go to Walmart and I hate Walmart. Um, <laughs> um, I just kind of, kind of be like a little hermit crab. Yeah. Hey, so um, John has, well, there's a couple of comments and then John has uh, a question and Dan has a question. So first, um, Nicole said that this is a great conversation and she said, good evening to Tamika. And then uh, John just said, as an, as art world professionals, it's easy to sometimes for us to get caught up in the heaviness of conceptual intent in the art that we forget about the pure therapeutic and cathartic relief art making can provide. It's nice to hear Tamika talk about the lighter side of her creative interests. And then um, John's question is um, in response to like the amount of tension that you're currently receiving from the art world, Tamika, has that affected your work and um, and what do what do you want to make about your work about? Sorry, got tongue tied. <laughs> <laughs> I could repeat it if I messed it up too much. <laughs> I'm, 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 Tamika, I'm really interested if if all of this attention that you're that you're deservedly receiving right now, but very kind of like you know it's it's very concentrated over a short period of time. If that's affected your artwork and is it affecting what you're planning to make art about in the future? Um, no, that part, absolutely not. Um, 
I am way more busy than you know I can possibly manage, but I just do the best that I can. So what I do is because I store my ideas in my mind and they just really need an outlet. I'll just randomly get up and say, oh, I'm going to go to the studio right now. And I may sit there for 24 hours, 10 hours straight, eight hours straight. Um, and I may do a lot of artwork at one time. Or I may just go and I'll be like, one is in my mind is driving me crazy. So I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to focus on that one piece. But I got like three good pieces like this kind of driving me crazy. So, How do you prioritize when it's when that's happening? Um, how to fix my sleep. <laughs> um. If I if I dream about something, and especially if I dream I dream about it or I'm thinking about it so hard that I just can't go to sleep, I know that it's something important about why I need to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's how I come up with that. Just you know, kind of let it whatever kind of rises to the top is what needs to happen. Tina, you said there was another question? Yes. Yeah, so Dan wants to know what Tamika uses as collage adhesive. Do you use glue stick or spray mount, gel medium, etc.? Um, a little bit of everything. Um, and luckily I know how to improvise a lot too. <laughs> Dope tape is included. So, <laughs> It's just uh well duct tape can fix everything. So um I use um gel mediums, uh just about everything. Sometimes you really have to experiment to kind of come up with what you with what you want. Then it also depends on what kind of background it's on. And then Nicole asked, um, also, please tell us about those scary collages that you made for um, the New York Times style magazine incorporating images from for former slave plantations in Alabama. Um... The New York Times Style Magazine commissioned me um, to do some artwork, and it was going to be for a ghost story. Uh, I think they said the ghost story was going to be an antebellum setting, so forth, um, set in the Black Belt. They they probably thought they did, but they never actually gave me the story to read beforehand. So I kind of just took what they what they really gave me and uh, ran with it, and I ended up um, going to Montgomery, Alabama, and a couple of other places, just um, researching, just kind of getting the feel, and. Uh, Pretty much uh, put it together, but I actually used this one of the top 10 places, spookiest places in Alabama. The house right up on uh, on 12th Avenue uh, in Norwood. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the one I, I used in the end. And what is that uh, it's one of those huge antebellum houses that they have in Nor in Norwood, mm -hmm. and it has a wine cellar in it. But like it still looks pretty spooky. They use the wine cellar; but they don't use the other parts of the house. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tina, would you want to go on to the next slide? And so, just a reminder: these images that we're showing are the ones that are currently up in the exhibition here at Ava. Um, and Tina, uh, can you tell me what the name of this one is? 
Yes, it's um, Dark Distortion in Black, um, 2021. So this one's a newer piece then. Um, can you tell us uh, kind of what inspired it or um, where you started with it and how it came out the way it did? Um, it's one of those situations where uh, I was way too overstimulated by social media, news media, crazy people, and uh, it was having a mental health toll on me, and this is how I felt. Um, I was kind of like in a bad space at that time, just listening to it. Um, because in a sense, I didn't want to actually make any more work about it. And uh, it's just was, was trying to figure out where, uh, how was I going to process these feelings if I don't want to make any pieces about, about it. Um, so that was just more from my personal feelings. And and just me just naturally being um when I feel overwhelmed. So um when you do feel overwhelmed, is the art kind of that refuge um that you go to for that? Definitely. Yeah. Overwriting over any of the other mediums. Oh, I won't. I won't say that. Uh, it's just that for some strange reason, I don't feel like I had the same time uh, that I used to to just sit down and write. Because I can write for like hours upon hours mm -hmm. without stopping. But I think like right now, this more right here. Um, so I've learned how to uh, really enjoy the process of the visual art. And um, so, yeah. And so I know you're taking this time kind of to um, uh, not necessarily pivot, but take a, a little break from the current artwork that you've been making. Um, and so with that, do you have any advice, particularly to the students who are in the room um, or also on the Zoom um, about, you know, when you have a moment and you're, you're kind of rethinking or you need to take a break, like how is it, I, I guess my question is, how do you uh, get back into it? Like, how do you keep with your art? Oh, um, like after I take a break? Yeah. Um, even, I mean. If I physically take a break, it's like I said, I have so much stuff that's just stored mm -hmm. and it's like it's just there. It never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. If I thought about writing something six months ago, I pretty much know what I want to write mm -hmm. right now. So um, it's just a matter of do I have this material? Do I want to do it with this? Because certain things that uh, I kind of got stored in my mind. I can just pull them out and it makes it seem like I gave, I just, I just did it. Mm -hmm. But it's really just been there all along. And do you have, in general, any um, advice for students as they are going to start their careers and um, about either making art or going into the art world? Or just any advice in general that you'd like to pass along? Um. You know, you just have you have to have confidence in yourself. Uh, there's countless success stories of people that wholeheartedly believe in something they were doing, something they made, something they thought, and everybody around them thought they they were foolish <laughs> or, or whatever. So, if you're really passionate about art. Don't make it difficult. You're going to be the best you, you can be as long as you're true to yourself. What you feel, it doesn't matter what another person says or whatever. If you're true to that, you will always come out with something that resonates with somebody in the world. 
we can we can almost be sure that people um can see some things in our artwork that we don't see and, and just sort of the beauty of it. So never discount the feelings. Uh, you know, what's deep inside of you, what you think. I always feel free. You, you got to be free doing this. That's one of my quests. Freedom is one of the reasons why I do this. Expression probably sets that freedom um, out there and really kind of help you uh, understand it. Yes. So I know we have one last image from the exhibition tonight, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and then this is the only one that did actually <laughs> print out the title for me. Um, Open Wounds, uh, Phil Mary Turner, 2021. And it's made out of paper mache, plywood, acrylic paint, poster board, and rope. So this is not necessarily a two-dimensional collage. This is a three-dimensional mixed media piece, um, still a form of a collage. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Um, working, working on her piece was uh, rather difficult. At the, um, I did some, you know, collages in reference um, to what Mary Turner had went through. Uh, somewhere inside my spirit, I did not feel like um, I had done what I feel like I need to do as an artist to, um, you know, sort of kind of, I, I don't know. It's some kind of way that I just, I felt the situation. And it just uh, made me just go through that process. It did. Uh, what really inspired you to go to make this um, more three dimensional than the other two dimensional works? Uh, and have you started gravitating towards more three dimensional pieces? Um, you hear. You hear a lot of people talk about um, different tragedies that um, African Americans have experienced. But the the way it made me feel when when I heard that, like it seems like it doesn't get the attention that it needed, and I really wanted people to feel and understand, you know how horrific that was, what she went through, what, what, she, what she possibly looked like, um, how, I don't know, it seems like a person could almost be soulless to carry out that type of act. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to, I know we're almost at the end of time. Um, I want to... I'm oh, sorry, Tina, did you say something? I was going to say, there, um, Sonia has one question. Okay. Um, does Tamika have any artists or craftspeople in her family? Um, my dad and my uncle, um, both of them were pretty artistic. Um, and when I was younger, I actually wanted to draw just like them. But back in them days, they used to call them starving artists. And, and my daddy was like, well, you good at it, but I don't know if you're going to be able to make no money doing it. So, I mean, I guess that was his reason for giving up. But some kind of way, it all came back full circle for me. That's great. Um, do you guys here in the room have any kind of final questions? Source your materials nowadays. Like, does you just have stuff come to you and you think you have, or do you like deliberately go out and look for certain types of? And 
And so the question to the Zoom was, how do you source your materials? Um, I still pretty much do the same stuff that I started off. I go by a lot of magazines, but the truth is I like the magazines. And sometimes there's just something in the magazine that like, I don't want to put it out of the magazine. Um, but as time has went on, uh, I have started to uh, want to explore different type of material. Um, and work on larger scales. So I suppose that will actually make me um, go and seek out a whole lot of different materials. All right. Well, I know we're kind of close to the end of time. One of the things that we traditionally do um, at the end of an Outside the Lions is show what we worked on. Uh, and so um, I know John's going to come in here and help show uh, uh, for the students. But if you are online and you were working on something during this, we would love to see it. So if you want to hold it up. Um, I did not get very far, as I never do on any of these. Uh, but I did do something. <laughs> mm. um, and uh, so uh, I do want to say that uh, Tanika is here with us uh, her, her artwork is in that show Marking Time Art in the Age of Mass Incarceration um, and that is curated by uh, Dr. Nicole Fleetwood who is here online with us who is the James Baldwin Johnson Professor of Media, Culture and Communication at New York University and the exhibition reflects her decade-long commitment to research and programming on the visual art and culture of mass incarceration. Uh, we are thankful to her and the entire Marking Time team for working with us on bringing the exhibit to Birmingham. Um, major support for Marking Time, Art and Age of Mass Incarceration is provided by the Art for Justice Fund, a sponsored project of Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors, NYU Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development, as well as the Alabama State Council for the Arts. Um, so please, if you'd like to come see it, we would love to have you guys. Tanika, thank you so much uh, for being here with us today. Uh, John, do you want to kind of show what so, the artist? Yeah, <laughs> what, what if everyone will kind of hold this up. I'm going to do like just some minute. little kind of pass by. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not wow. That's okay. <laughs> if you if you keep working on them and actually end up finishing them, uh, feel free to either send them to us or yes, yeah. So for anyone, as always, if you're at home, um, you take a picture, post it on Instagram at Ava UAB, tag us uh, in it, and uh, and for you guys, if you guys want to do that. Uh, later on, or you know, feel free to stop, stop by and show us in the building. <laughs> we would love to see it. But thank you, Tamika. Thank you to our students, our uh, our wonderful tech staff. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone online, and have a great night, everybody. Thank you.